the title of today's Monday Man is The Gift Makes Way for the Man. So let me pray. Father, I just thank you that everything we need for life and godliness is given to us through the knowledge of the scriptures. I pray this morning that we would realize, Lord, that each one of us have been gifted by God far beyond natural talent. And uh, Lord, I just ask that the Holy Spirit would anoint this teaching, that each of us would be able to discover the gifting of God in us and take care of it, develop it, use it, yield to it. And so I just welcome the power of the Holy Spirit now to teach through me the truth of God's word. And we thank you, Lord, that you watch over your word to perform it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you'd like an opening verse, it would be uh, Proverbs 18, 16. And this is what Proverbs 18, 16 said. A man's gift makes room for him and will bring him before great men. So you and I have each been given a gift, maybe more than one gift, from the Lord. And that gift make, will make a way for us. Uh, I'm sure by now, if you've been watching me or listening to me, you know what my gift is. I have been gifted by the Holy Spirit to teach the Word of God, which I absolutely love doing. Um, and so let's talk about some things before uh, we get into in the weeks and months to come. I'm going to actually be teaching on the nine gifts of the Spirit. But there, the this today and next week, I have to lay some foundation so we understand uh, about the gifting of God. Remember, Proverbs 18.10, the gift makes way for the man. So I want to turn to 1 Timothy 4 and read a scripture in 1 Timothy 4 as I get into the um, introduction to this teaching. In 1 Timothy 4.14, 4, we're given some instruction and it says in 1 Timothy um, 4, 14, it says this, Neglect not the gift of God, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbyters. Now that's a whole other teaching, the gift of prophecy, laying on of hands, the presbyters. But there are times when people have had hands laid on them and the Spirit of the Lord will prophesy that they have certain gifts that the Lord's going to use them in. But I want you to notice the beginning of the verse. Again, this is 1 Timothy 4, 14. It said, neglect not the gift that is within me. So let me define the word neglect. I think we pretty much know what it means, but it means to be careless and to make light of something. Just you're careless about it. You make light. It's not that important to you. So we have to be very careful that we never neglect any of the gifts of God that he's given us. Don't take them lightly. Don't be careless with them. Don't neglect them. So again, Timothy was warned not to neglect the gift, which means obviously it is very possible to receive a gift from God and neglect it. Many of us, I'm sure, have been given gifts that we weren't real crazy about. Um, and so we neglect them. We just put them in a shelf or put them in the guest room. Uh, I got caught years ago re-gifting, <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. But my sister-in-law had given me some type of birthday gift that was nothing like I would ever want. And I put it in the closet and it was there a few years. And her birthday was coming up, I don't know, two or three years later. And I thought, oh, I'll give this to her. I forgot totally that she had gifted this to me <laughs> and I didn't like the gift. So I wrapped it up and I gave it back to her. So she opens it on her birthday and she goes, oh, Gwen, this is just like the gift I gave you a couple years ago. Well, I am sure I turned every shade of gray and I quickly said, I didn't want to lie, but I quickly said, I knew you liked this and I wanted you to have one. Now, that might be shady, but it was the best I could do. I had neglected the gift she gave me because I didn't like it. I didn't find it valuable. I did not esteem it. And we have to be careful that we never do that with the gift of God. And so what I do now, um, if I get a gift, I on, in a little tag note, sticky note, I write on the bottom in case I don't like the gift. Who gave it to me? So I never re-gift it uh, because I really had egg on my face that day. So don't neglect the gifts of God. Don't be negligent with them. Don't be careless about them. Don't treat them lightly. Then we're told in 2 Timothy 1.6, 2 Timothy 1, 6, to stir up the gifts of God in us. And I'm hoping that between uh, today and next week's teaching, you'll be able to identify your gifting so we don't neglect it, so we stir it up, so we develop it, so we mature in it. And so in 2 Timothy 1, 6, 
Everybody knows verse 7, but I'll read 6 and 7. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you would stir up the gifts of God, which was in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, if you go back to 2 Timothy 1, 6, we wouldn't have to be put into remembrance unless we were capable of forgetting. And obviously, we forget. So, Paul writes to Timothy and he said, listen, in 1 Timothy, he says, don't neglect the gift of God that was given you through the laying on of hands. And we find out from this, it was his hands that were laid on him with the other brothers. But it says in verse 6, I put you in remembrance. So we need to remember these things. Stir up the gift of God in thee. Every one of us has several giftings. And I'm going to talk in a moment about the three sets of giftings. There's the motive gifts. There's the manifestation gifts and there's the ministry gifts. And so we, let me not get ahead of myself here. So let's concentrate on this. Don't neglect the gift of God in you. Don't treat it carelessly. Don't um, despise it, not use it. Number two, we are told to stir up the gift of God within us. And so I looked up the word stir up and it means to kindle, listen to this, to kindle a flame in your mind. Now, we know the gifts are given in the spirit, but our mind has to be engaged. We have to stir up our minds to use and be, not use, but be available to the Lord for any moment he needs to th flow through us in a gift. And of course, you know um, that the person who receives the gift, uh, we're just the, um, I don't want to use the word channel because of all the uh, witchcraft and and uh, people that use that word, but we are, the Lord is in us. And so if he gives me, for instance, if he wants to use me in the gifts of healing and that gift flows through me, the person that received the gift is the person that got healed, not the person whom the gift flowed through. The gifts belong to God. None of them are ours. And we just need to yield to the gifting. Don't neglect it. Remember to stir it up. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you about three sets of giftings in the Bible. And it's very important that we realize as I go through this teaching, each set of the gifting comes from one person of the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And each one of these three sets of gifts comes from one of the Godhead. You know, when I first became a Christian and then I got what they call spirit filled and Pentecostal, everything was the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I realized as I grew and matured that there are other giftings that are very valuable to us in the body of Christ. And so let's take a look first at Romans 12. Romans chapter 12. Now, if you're taking notes, you're going to want to give yourself one, two, three. And uh, I guess the best way to do it would be write motive gifts with a little line, Romans 12. Then you might drop down a little bit and write ministry gifts. Draw a line if you'd like to. Ephesians 4, 7. Drop down a little bit more. Manifestation gifts. Obviously, draw a line if you'd like. 1 Corinthians 12. So we're going to look at, uh, in this introduction to the gifts, the three different sets of giftings. So let's take a look at Romans 12, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through, let me see where I want to start. Romans 12, these are called, again, the motive gifts. Everybody has some type of gift inside them that kind of motivates them. And it's really wonderful uh, when you can discover your motive gift. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself and, and I don't want to, you know, talk too much about other people. But my husband has the motive gift of giving. There's no question. He loves to give. <laughs> my gift is holding on, bringing balance. But no, you can, I would encourage you. I don't know if God's going to ever direct me to teach the motive gifts on Monday Manna. But right now we're, I bit off enough, uh, I have enough to chew in the nine gifts of the spirit. So it's going to take me probably two to three months to go through each one of the giftings. But I want to read at least the motive gifts. And first of all, the number one thing you have to be aware of, and that's why I asked you to draw a line, the motive gift comes from God the Father. These gifts are given to us by the Father. 
They are not given to us by Jesus. They're not given to us by the Holy Spirit. They're given us given to us by the Father. So Romans 12, I'm going to read verses 1 all the way through uh, till I stop reading. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure how far I'm going to get, but then uh, I'll quickly mention what these gifts are. And so we're looking at the motive gifts that come from God the Father. Uh, I guess I could start maybe at verse 4. Romans 12, verse 4. For, for we have many members in one body, and all the members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, every one members one of another. Now, here we go. We're going to start at verse 6. You know what? I need to go back to verse uh, 1 so that you see it comes from God the Father. So forgive me for that little error. Let's go back to Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Here it is. For I say through the grace of God given to me, that every man ought to not think more highly of himself. Here it is. Let me slow down on verse 3 to show you that these come from God the Father. I say through the grace given me, to every man among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God, here it is, has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So in verse 3, this is talking about God the Father giving us faith, and then it talks about us being members of one body, and then it actually starts to share with us what the motivational gifts are. So we see in verse 3, they come from God the Father, Reading starting at verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether it's prophecy, let us prophesy according to our proportion of faith. If it's ministry, some versions of the Bible say serving, let us wait on our ministering. If it's teaching, on teaching, he that exhorts on exhortation, he that gives, let him do it with simplicity. He that rules, some versions say leadership. Let him do it with diligence. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. So I can stop there, I guess, at verse 8. Now, if you look at these motive gifts, we see in verse 3, they're given by God the Father. There are seven motivational gifts. And so I will read them uh, or mention them for you if you'd like. And so there are seven motive gifts. And so let me show them to you. Uh, first is the gift of prophecy in verse 6. In verse 7, there's the gift of serving and the gift of teaching. In verse 8, very important gift to the body of Christ, exhortation. In verse 8, there's also the gift of giving. There's the gift of leadership and the gift of mercy. So let me read just what they are to you without going verse by verse. Prophecy serving, teaching, exhorting, giving, leadership, and mercy. Seven motive gifts, all given by God the Father. And seven, um, in case you're not aware of this, seven is the number of completion. Seven is finality. Um, eight, the number eight is new beginnings, but seven means completeness, like fullness. All right, so there are seven motive gifts coming from God the Father. Now let's go to the book of Ephesians and we'll see these ministry gifts. So we're talking, we talked about the motive gifts that come from God the Father, seven motive gifts. Prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, ruler, uh, ruling and mercy. All right, let's go to Ephesians 4 and take a look at what the Bible teaches us or what people understand as the ministry gifts of Christ. These gifts, obviously, come from Christ. Uh, the motive gifts come from God the Father. The ministry gifts come from God the Son, Jesus. And the manifestation gifts come from the Holy Spirit. So the whole Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are all together in the gifting of the body of Christ. And so I am in Ephesians 4. I want to decide where I want to start reading. Uh, Ephesians 4. Let's start maybe at verse 
7. But unto every one of us is given grace. Here it is. Of the gift of Christ. So these gifts come from Jesus Christ. When, and then I'm going to read a little bit and show you the gifts when we get to them. There's five ministry gifts. Uh, verse 7. But unto every one is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I read that. Verse 8. Wherefore, when he ascended on high, he led captivity ca captive. Watch. And he gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first to the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens that he might fill all things. I don't have time to teach about that, but you know that Jesus descended, uh, took, took the keys of hell and death from the enemy, went over into um, paradise, took all the Old Testament saints, delivered them out of this place of holding in the middle of the earth, this paradise, this Sheol uh, and hell and heaven or, you know, paradise, took all the Old Testament saints, Lot, Abraham, Sarah, Moses, and led them in a train, in his train up into the heavens. But anyway, I, I'm not supposed to be teaching on that today. So verse 11 defines the five ministry gifts for us. It says this in verse 11. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And I'll read a few more verses in a moment, but let me explain again. These ministry gifts come from Jesus. You go back to verse 7 and 8, or verse 7. These gifts are given. They're called the gift of Christ, and they're given to all of us. And in verse 11, it defines the five ministry gifts for us, okay? And so if you look at verse 11, here's the five ministry gifts. We have the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So Jesus gave these five ministry gifts in the earth to men. Many people believe these are needed very much so in leadership of a local church. You need an apostle, somebody that founded it. You need a pastor. You need teachers. You need evangelists. Um, but remember, the word is some, not all. Not everybody's an apostle. Not everybody's a pastor. Not everybody's a teacher. And I pastored, as many of you know, for about 15 years. But my real gifting is teaching. And um, so again, the five ministry gifts of Christ are found in verse 11. And now we're going to show you why we need these. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of to the fullness of Christ. I have to keep reading because it's just too good. Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, we will grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Verse 16, for whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplies, oh, so important, every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body to the edifying of itself in love. What a chapter. So we see these gifts come from Christ, which is Ephesians 4, 7. We see in verse 11, the names of the five gifts of ministry. It's a apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers. The reason for these giftings, verse 12, is to get us into unity. Oh, I don't, it, I don't know when's the last time you read Psalm 133, but if you would take a moment and read Psalm 133, it said, behold how good and pleasant it is when the brethren dwell together in unity. It's like the precious anointing oil running down the head of Aaron, our priest, down the beard, like the snow on Mount Hermon. And it says it runs down, this anointing runs down to the hem of the garment. And I love what Psalm 133 said. It's a place where God commands a blessing. I'm not sure why at this moment, but I sense the Holy Spirit wants me to read Psalm 133 because the whole reason for the ministry gifts, 
the motive gifts, the manifestation gifts, or so we become mature. No more children tossed to and fro by every evangelist on TV, every new radio show, every podcast. We need to be mature and stable. We need the motive gifts, the ministry gifts, the manifestation gifts, excuse me, till we become mature in Christ. Now I want to read Psalm 133 because the whole reason back in Ephesians 4 verse 12 for the ministry gifts of Christ is so we have unity and we come into the knowledge of Christ. Psalm 133 just felt like the Lord wanted me to read it. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon and the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion, there the Lord, listen, commands a blessing, life forevermore. You want a commanded blessing? Get in unity with the body of Christ. I don't care if you worship in a Baptist church, a Catholic church, a Pentecostal church, a Lutheran church. There's, uh, as long as God is honored, you know, I look at it like everybody has a different kind of house. Some people like two stories. Some people like ranchers. Some people like split levels. To me, the house of God, whatever the denomination is, is just the house of God. It's all Bethel, God's house. We are all God's people. And we need to get in unity so that anointing flows from our high priest all the way down to the hem of his garment. We touch the hem and we get the commanded blessing. All right, back to Ephesians. Sorry, <laughs> I got off a little bit. Back to Ephesians. So, we see in verse 11, the fivefold gifts. Now, remember, I said the uh, motive gifts, there were seven motive gifts. Seven is the number of completion. There are five ministry gifts. Five is the number of grace. Now, let's take a look at the third group of gifts called the manifestation. And they're given, as you'll see in a minute, by the Holy Spirit. They are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I wanted to break down these three sets of giftings so that you would know one set comes from the Father, one set comes from the Son, one set comes from the Holy Spirit, and we want God to use us in any gift He chooses. I'm not going to neglect the gifts of God. I'm going to stir up and fan into flame the gifts of God because, again, remember, the number seven is completion, the number five is grace, and now we're going to look at the nine manifestations given by the Holy Spirit. So I am in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, I have a few minutes. I want to see if I had enough time to read this. I do. Let's start at verse, uh, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I'll be teaching on this in the weeks to come. You know that you were Gentiles. Remember too, please, the word Gentile does not mean non-Jew. In the Bible, the word Gentile means one without God. So they were unsaved without God, but now they've come to, to Christ. Carried away by dumb idols, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no man can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now here you go, verses 4 through 11. I'll mention the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but the same God who works all in all. Would you just stop? I don't even have this underlined in my Bible, but the Holy Ghost just showed this or reminded me of this. If you will look at verse 4 through 6, here's the Godhead. Uh, if you look at verse 4, this is the Holy Spirit. Now, the diversity of gifts, the same Spirit. Okay, so verse 4 is the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, the same Lord, that's Jesus. And verse 6, the same God works all in all. So even in this, it's still the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the gifts are given in verse 4 by the Holy Spirit. They're operated or administered by the Lord Jesus. And the diversity and operation belongs to God the Father. So here we go, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now I'm going to read 8 to 11, and then I will uh, mention the nine gifts of the Spirit. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, 
verse 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work, one and the self same spirit, this is so important, verse 11, dividing to every man severally as he wills. It's up to God what gifts we flow in and what gifts we yield to and what gifts he anoints us for. So let me give you the nine gifts of the spirit. We'll pick this up next Monday, Manna. We'll break them down and uh, really get into a more in-depth study. But I wanted to lay a foundation of the motive gifts, the manifestation gifts, the ministry gifts from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So here are the nine manifestations of the Spirit. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing. I don't expect you to write this fast. I'm just reviewing. Miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, and interpretation. And remember this, they're given to every one of us. Please look at verse 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Why? To profit all of us. And then we cannot forget verse 11. Very important. But all these work, one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills it. So it's up to God as he wills what gift to give to what person to profit all of us. And let me just say, there are nine gifts of the Spirit. The number nine represents balance. There's nine fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5. There's nine fruits. I'm sorry. There's nine fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5 and nine gifts. The gifts and the fruits need to work together. And I have one last verse before I pray for us. Um, and so I hope that you've been enriched by this teaching, that even in your own personal life, if you have time to study, you might get a book on the motive gifts and start to study. What's my gifting? Am I a teacher? Do I have the gift of giving? Do I, am I have the gift of exhortation, which is sorely needed? We need all the Barnabases we can get in the body of Christ, people that encourage and lift us up. And every gift is important. But I want to go to Hebrews 2, 4, before I close and show you that um, the gifts are still for today. All these sets of giftings are still for today. So we are in Hebrews 2. I'll just read 1 to 4. Um, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward. Verse 3. How? Shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Verse 4, God bearing witness with signs and wonders, with diverse miracles and gifts according and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So here is my closing remarks. If we still believe Hebrews 2, 3, that salvation is for today, then we have to believe the gifts are for today because verse 4 said he confirms salvation through the giftings. So let me read it one more time and then I'll pray. How shall we escape, Hebrews 2, 3, if we neglect so great of salvation, which at first was spoken by the Lord, and it was confirmed to us by those who heard it. How is it confirmed? Salvation, verse 4. God bearing witness with signs, wonders, diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Father, I pray for each one of us that are receiving this teaching this morning, that we would not neglect the gift of God that's within us, that we would stir up the gifts of God, that maybe, Lord, we would say to you today, the gift makes way for the man. Father, make a way for the gifting that you've put into me, that at the end of the day, God, I won't neglect or forget the gift of God, but I would value your gifting. And we just thank you today that the greatest gift of all is salvation. Thank you so much for our salvation, the gift of God. Thank you that you so loved us that you sent your only son to die for us. Thank you that you still confirm salvation with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, with the motive and the manifestations and the ministry gifts of Christ. Bless this teaching to our heart, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.